if we take 4,000 pounds of steel to Starbucks to get a cup of coffee, it's not a great tool for that job. And that is the right tool for the job. It's very simple. Okay. Hydraulic brakes all the way okay. around. Twist throttle like a motorcycle. I've never ridden a motorcycle. Just roll it right to you. Okay. Oh. And then regenerative braking is right here. Why would I want that? I mean, it slows down the electric motors, puts energy back in the pack. It feels like a brake. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> okay. Give it a little bit. Here we go. Okay. If we take 4,000 pounds of steel to Starbucks to get a cup of coffee, it's not a great tool for that job. Okay. Yes, please. All right, let's see, can I play like, like this? <laughs> okay, that's not crazy play, but that's fun. <laughs> really? This feels so fast. Wow. I like uh, how much safer it feels uh, than a motorcycle. You're in a cage too that's been crash tested by the federal government. And you can, you're gonna sense it, right? You're gonna sense the chassis. Yeah, open up that throttle, see how fast you can get this thing going. Woo! I definitely think this is the future, right? I mean, let's be straight about it. Like there are cooler things to spend your money on than gasoline. just not so cheap right now, right? There's a pain threshold there, right? Like when there's a guy. Hey. hey. Hi, this is great. I was just saying I'd like to take it on the freeway. That was so fun. I want to get it up a little higher. I like to have some nerve too. Hey, here it comes from cars. Let's go. What are we doing next? Yeah, let's Hello? Would you guys like a cup, cup of tea no, or anything like good. that? Wait, you have a couple cars in your driveway? Uh, these are not cars. Oh. These are Arkhamotos. <laughs> what does that mean? This is, the, this is the Roadster. Okay. That's the fun utility vehicle. Both are technically motorcycles, but they are three-wheeled electrics. So two wheels in the front, dual motor front wheel drive. You got one motor for each wheel, half shafts going out, the battery, is kind of the, the main trunk here. It's, it's the same machine, but different variations for different use cases. So on a regular basis, you're using? Several of us live in the house. Okay. We use the vehicles for, you know, you got the, the dog sidecar, of course. These are prototype Barkamotos. That will be an accessory coming soon. But yeah, it's all the daily stuff. Yeah. Way, way better than these tin cans you guys drive around. Yeah. Sorry, no offense intended. <laughs> Woohoo! So we've got the, the fun utility vehicle lives up to its name. We've got the, the Deliverator, which is a last mile delivery vehicle. We've got the flatbed for you know, general fleet utility. We've got the rapid responder, gets you on the site quick. And then we got our platform two coming along, which is the mean lean machine that tilts and flies the road. That's our collaboration with Bob Mile, our chief tilting officer, founder of Tilting Motorworks and the Trio kit that bolts on to big bikes to make them way better. So this is the Roadster. So are these the only motorized vehicles you have? I don't want to call them cars, but do you have any cars? I don't, I don't own a car. Okay. I, I share my mom's Tesla Okay. when I need to go on road trips. Because you wouldn't take these on a long road trip. Oh, I would. The long road trip I plan is going to be right around the planet. Okay. That's the, uh, call it uh, Johnny Arkamoto seed. <laughs> no, no PT right, on right. Should I get Scott ski? What's Arconaut? What's that refer to? It says a point of adventurous craft, an intrepid explorer who knows where their... Pilot of adventurous craft, an intrepid explorer who knows where his 
hers, theirs towel is. All right. Why Arkimoto? What's it mean? Ark is the Ark of the future. It was originally electricity. I, moto is drive. So the brand means future I drive. That's the past. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Joe, you ready? Here we go. With the Roadster, you get, you know, your full body into the experience. You can really put yourself where you want to be. It, it stays planted to the road like a brick. So, you're, you're riding a brick horse. <laughs> We're not going that fast now, but it, it zooms. It's like somewhere between a magic carpet and a broomstick. But it's really steady. Well, as a magic carpet broomstick should be. But it's not. It's not a motorcycle. Auto cycle. Uh huh. Is a word that people use now. Okay. These three wheel things. Yeah. I just call it the future. <laughs> a little bit of a bump. Oh, we can't go except bicycles, but there might be a way. Oh, there's a way. <laughs> Woo. Oh no. It's great. It's very smooth. But I mean, there are other three wheel vehicles out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. We love them all. You do. Are you yeah. different? One of the nice things about Arcimoto is that it's really about the platform. So this is it is one machine that can be constructed in lots of different ways. Right, like there's another one behind you that doesn't look the same. Coming through. Welcome to the ramp. This is Arkimoto's main manufacturing facility. It's 10 acres, 200,000 square feet. The big mission here is that we can scale up to 50,000 units a year. So right now, what are you at? Are you close we to build that? six a day right now. Okay. And I'm gonna walk you down the line so we can take a look and see how we build an Arcimoto. Cool. This is station one, so they begin, you know, with a front carriage right here. This is an electric power steering unit underneath. And they're gonna start building the front assembly. If we look out to the right from where we're standing, that's mechanical sub-assembly pre-build, so it feeds the line this way. If you look up way out to your left, that's electrical sub-build, so it feeds the line from the left. So, And then come on down, let's take a look. So this is sub-assembly in process, gearbox in the middle, two electric motors, one on the right side, one on the left side. Arcimoto is front-wheel drive. It also allows us to do some traction control stuff through software, and it's great for inclement weather. came up with the idea on a napkin, you were there. Yeah, so I've been here since the beginning, guys, and we sat down on a Saturday morning, Mark had a crappy napkin sketch of what he wanted to build for the world. You know, and we have been through at least eight generations of prototyping to get to a pre-production pilot. But the idea was sort of taking off, like, let's make something three-wheel that's fast and EV, and I mean, what were the basic? Yeah, well, like, yeah, Mark, not a car guy, and he, you, you know, he loves a bicycle. The bicycle is, you know, and there's weather, safety, all that kind of stuff, especially at night in the rain. So he wanted something in between. He couldn't find what he wanted. So we started sketching and started creating. So they can see it a little better. So guys, this is the lion's share of a vehicle. So you have front wheel drive. You have three wheel disc brakes all the way around. Here's your CV and a sway bar right there. Two inverters, one for the right and left motor. A little chill plate in between and the charger right behind it. This suspension was based on the old Lotus 7s. Lotus 7s had horizontally opposed shock absorbers that evolved into Formula One and IndyCar racing because you had to put it in a bullet where Americans will race anything. Couch, lawn chair, makes no difference. So even though this is a super efficient chassis, 
I mean, its mathematical equivalency is 230 miles per gallon. This is a beautiful suspension. Someone will put hotter motors in it. Someone will put more batteries in it. So let's say you're gonna handle a lot of weight and a lot of bumps on the road in a nice way. Yeah. Very beautiful suspension and fully adjustable. Fully adjustable meaning? Right here you can change the tension in the coilovers and you can adjust the ride height and how much force you have for all your jounts. There's also multiple things in the software that are programmable. There's three things that are programmable. The throttle map is, so it can be in super efficient mode or it can be hot rod mode. Power steering is adjustable, so we can adjust how much assist you get at different speeds and also the regen. I like it a little more aggressive. Some of the customers like it a little more soft and then very predictable, so. Yeah. You know, I've seen some vehicles that look sort of similar. Renault's got one. They spent a ton of money on that vehicle. There's been a lot of failed attempts at this over the years. It's a very old idea. It evolved from, after World War II, they would graft part of a front end to a motorcycle. That's what evolved into like the Morgan. Has a little V-twin motorcycle engine. Looks like a little sports car underneath it. You remember the evolution of the Messerschmitt? Yeah, absolutely. From the airplanes. That's right. And they had to adapt. Very similar. So, Very similar. So it's been, they've been trying it for years, but it's been, why, why so many failures? Great question. Like, <laughs> what's, great the, question. what's the sticky point though? I mean, well, safety is very difficult. Making a vehicle that handles well, making it cost effective, making something the customer really wants and desires. Mm -hmm. Like the whole trajectory there. And so here we see seats are starting to go in, seat belts are going to go in. Ark and I, in the beginning, we said it had to have seat belts because our loved ones would be in the vehicle. I naively did not know that that meant a 28G front cash. So this has been through the same testing as my Mustang. To our engineer's credit, it was absolutely hell getting through it, and it's one of the smallest chassis to pass it successfully. What does that mean to pass something like that? You run it down a track, and they rip it backwards and apply 28 G's, and then it has to pass. It's a go or a no go. So it's a strong chassis. Yeah, it's been in many collisions by now. We've been T-boned by a pickup truck, a drunk driver, pushed the chassis about 30 feet, flipped it over, cut his seat belts loose, gave us a call, said, thank you so much for doing a great job. How long is it gonna take to get my Arcimoto replaced? We have had a couple people rear-ended, They've got a bump and they've been fine. So. so it's really not about the size, it's about the strength of the chassis. Correct. There's a million details that go into keeping you safe there. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? That's a beautiful roll cage you got on there. So you can see the glazing is starting to go on. They've got the dash installed. The chassis is now on its wheels and rolls forward. One of the unique things to an Arkimoto is we use a laser alignment tool behind you. And of course, we had to create a way so that it worked well with a three-wheeled vehicle. So at this point, you have your body panels on. This is a complete vehicle. It has a charging port right here, just like everybody else. It's got its vinyl on here so we can play with some colors. It's got its badging. It's 1,300 pounds, 75 miles an hour. It's quick in the zero to 60. It's got a lockable storage back here and then a little cubby underneath to put your cord and paperwork and all that kind of stuff. This has got a 100 mile range. What that means is half freeway speed, half 35. At 35, it'll go about a buck 20. If we drive them here to Corvallis, which is approximately 65 miles, at 65 miles an hour continuous, we'll get there and then we'll need juice. Okay. How long does it take to charge? So it charges at 110 level one, it'll take just short of eight hours. At level two, 220 takes just short of four hours or about 25% an hour. Here you can see battery modules. Um, you can see how the batteries really dictate the shape of the bike. Absolutely. And an idea here has been that battery technology is moving so quickly into the future that if we have the ability to bring this chassis back in a few years from now, pull those two modules out, put two upgraded modules in, all we do is load new software into your chassis, you drive away with the upgraded vehicles. 
We go a mile away. The junkyard is the size of an ocean where cars, they just start falling apart quicker than we want to repair them at $100 an hour. We don't want to do that. Once these batteries have had a nice long life in the vehicle, you know the fun and the torque of an electric is you hit the throttle and you get that little shitty grin on your face from the acceleration. Yeah. After that, you know, eventually these will no longer charge and they won't discharge as hot as we want them to. So they will have another whole lifetime as a perfectly good battery in some use like solar where you don't need that throttle response. You can just utilize the module again. It can go as long as it'll go for a nice storage system. So guys, we make everything we can. So if you look out to the right, you can see subcomponents ready to go. This is the backbone. This is the central chassis of the vehicle. This starts out as a flat piece of sheet metal. So what kind of material uh, you use for body panels? Yeah, so this is a TPO blend, which is what all car front bumpers are made out of. And so notice the weight. And so it's thin material, but incredibly strong. So if you bust it up, if you can bust it up with a sledgehammer, we'll grind it up and make new panels. In this case, uh, weight is not, doesn't have a correlation with strength. No, it would take away from performance. Like how light can it be, how strong can it be, still pass crash and uh, be easy to manufacture as well. Do people ask how it compares to gas, paying for gas? Like do you have make an equivalent of what you're going to pay for? Yeah, we have done those calculations many times, yeah. That's where we came up with 230 miles per gallon. My insurance rates are 28 bucks a month through a major carrier. And notice I'm not a 19 year old male, right? This is not as pretty, but I just wanted to show you all the vehicles getting ready to get shipped out to customers. Yeah. Like 53 footer comes in and they just load it up and off they go. Later, we hope to be able to rail them as well. Why are you in Eugene? It's hometown team. Mark grew up here. A lot of the guys, when they went to college here, so it really is the hometown team. As you know, Mark's house is a couple blocks away. Barry White is on the right. That's a five-axis CNC. They machine the gearboxes. Kenny G is a state-of-the-art lathe, so we make all the steering and components and that kind of stuff right there. So it's really an on-demand production. Yeah, plus it can run through the night. All right. And then we just add more cells as we need to scale. So eventually this will just build with the machines they need to do the work they need. So this is another part of we make anything we can. So this is thermoforming operations. We're playing around in some white plastic. We know that that can be really popular, uh, especially in fleet applications. So this is how body panels start out. This is just a sheet of material. This is what we're gonna make the body panels out. Having the operation here empowers us, which means that one of our guys can have a dream, come to work on Monday, do a sketch, sketch out a new part. I can hand that to a designer, they can put it in CAD, and then they'll, they'll cut it out in a temporary tool like that, like the ones on the shelf, and then we can pull plastic over it. So inside of two weeks from your dream, we can be looking at a prototype part in our hands. So. So then you make a permanent tool like these. So that tool can create thousands and thousands of parts. So they take the tool, they slide it into the machine right here. It brings it up, heats the plastic, pulls the plastic down, vacuums it very quickly. The robot snatches it, moves it over to the left. CNC trims it, drops it onto the conveyor belt, and just parts are just continuously running out. So. So this is what it looks like when it pops out. The sheet comes off the mold and it's trimmed into a usable part like that. Uh, how much waste does it go to make a thing? So notice how the part comes out. The machine trims it in that trimming machine there. Then we can capture all of the drop off yeah. and that goes into dumpsters, gets ground up and we make new panels and then make more parts out of it. Uh, so you guys yeah. are envisioning a moment where you create your own factories. I mean, we do like having our own equipment. 
I can either pay a vendor a lot more to yeah. create that for me, yeah. or I can invest the capital in the machines and then have total control out of the process and can iterate quickly. So in this facility, how much you can ramp up production? Yeah, like this will be an automated dip line, you know, so we powder coat our parts half a mile away, you know, and just dip them into the oven and out. That building will be filled with robots and all they'll do is make components for the line. And then we own this facility, so we'll be moving some of our operations to here, you know, instead of leasing other buildings, so. So if you peek under there, there's 15,000 square feet behind the curtain there and 15,000 above. And you know, all the engineers will be moved here, the designers will be moved here, so they can walk right down on the line and problem solve immediately. So you have this idea of an integrated facility. The significance here is it is the box that we want to create for the world, which means you take this whole thing as a box and then you could drop that box on the East Coast. They can begin making their own Arkhamotos for their own communities. These are a couple of our rental operations as a partner go car down in California. The team is super excited because a couple weeks ago we got our keys to Hawaii. The idea has been that what does the community want? What is going to help them right now get the job done that they're already doing with gasoline vehicles? The little okay. rolling chassis, yeah. the idea has been that we build everything on top of that. What can we bolt on top of that chassis that will do good in the community? This is a deliverator. And so, you know, Amazon's telling me I'm gonna have my tube of toothpaste in two days. So that giant truck's gonna drive down my neighborhood to hand me a tube of toothpaste is insane. This is our proposed idea of like packages, auto parts, pizza delivery, whatever you want to do. So you've got same chassis, same safety, single seat in the front. You've got a big cargo door here. So an Ikea style shelving unit or something where you can just set it up any way you need it. Do you need a little hot box and you keep your pizzas warm? So like totally configurable. Uh -huh. And then it has the pass through on the back too. Notice this is on the curb side. So you hop out, stay safe on the curb and then just hand your packages and stuff right out and it's got the pass through straight through there too. So the advantage of this option versus one of these electric, electric bikes. bikes probably speed and also gonna safety. be yeah safety you're gonna be really comfortable. These come with heated seats and grips it has a little defroster yeah. a Bluetooth stereo in there. This is a fun one we call our Aloha package so this comes in a variety of colors and super popular headed to Hawaii and Orlando. And in this configuration, Jeep has done it best forever, you know, you can just bolt accessories to this thing. I get questions about, hey, where's my surfboard go? Where's my mountain bike go? Will it pull a trailer? Like all of that stuff, so. What's FUV? So it stands for Fun Utility Vehicle. <laughs> so that's important. I mean, it's not just about performance. It's also about Absolutely. Experience. All right, you ready for this? Here we go. Put the key in, turn it on. Brings up the Arkhamoto wings. And then see, here's your instructions right here. This is your brake pedal on your right foot. Go ahead and push it down. And then see it saying press harder. Now reach right behind out of sight. There's a start button. Press this one a little harder again. And then pull that one. Perfect. So. This is our battery gauge, so you have 62% in your vehicle right now. Here's your indicators right there, your trip and your odometer. This one has 0.6 miles on it. It's a twist throttle like a motorcycle. And then take your right thumb and play with this back and forth and watch the center here. So it's neutral, drive, reverse, just like that. This is regenerative braking. That slows down the electric motors, puts some energy back in the pack. This is a kill switch. Turn signals on your left down low. Just play with them left and right. That's not the turn signal. <laughs> I bet you know what that is though. <laughs> Perfect. And then see, you can see your turn signals going. You got your horn, which you already found. Hazard right here. Lights all the time for safety. That's a dim feature at night. High beams right there. Very easy. It does have a California style door that can slip on and off. And what are these? 
wiper washer. Here's your heated seats. Heated? Rear here, heated grips, defrost. This is your park brake, so you just touch it. Locks the rear wheel down. When you come in, you just uh, click it in neutral and touch it again. This is for future stuff. We know that if we go to Arizona and stuff, we're gonna need doors and we're gonna need an AC system inside. That's oh, funny, different states require different things. So every state is unique. So we try to draft Tesla if it's appropriate because they've done a lot of work in front of us. Some states are extremely friendly to electric vehicles and some are not. So you're right now not going to Arizona, but you are in California and Oregon. Yeah, okay. out on the East Coast too. On the curves, okay. So, blinker. Brake. All region. I don't want to put anything on this curve, or no? Or should I put yeah, I could? Start. I should? Yeah. Oh, that makes more of us. I feel like we're going to slide out. Oh my god. No? Oh my god. It feels like we're going to slide out. I think I'm thinking of a bicycle. So as far as performance, what is giving me the fact that I have three wheels, if I'm fast and I'm turning and I'm being aggressive, how is my vehicle going to perform? Yeah, they're incredibly stable. You have all the battery weight located underneath down low exactly where you want it. This is a reverse trike design, so its weight distribution is 70% up front, 30 cent in the back. It's got a nice anti-dive built into it. so. If you and I take one out and do an emergency stop right now, it'll just sit down in a straight line. And that's critical to keeping you safe. We've tried to roll them all. We do it now with outriggers and Kevlar and helmets and all that kind of stuff, so. Okay, so there is a very narrow turn here and it does it totally fine, all right. That's, uh, that, I was wondering that too, what was the... Just follow those guys at first. 